Okey doke. Here we are at pet level. And I did this before, but this is on my home computer, which is a supercomputer, and it can capture far more detail. Um, now, the problem is this area here. And if we start to zoom out, this is the area that floods. And we need to understand why that floods. And if we maneuver, this gives us an idea of the problem. Now, this um, scale is three times normal elevation. And that means that the heights are exaggerated, but it helps get a better understanding of the flooding issue. So you can see that Fairlight, a lot of Fairlight is actually now draining in here. You've got areas over here and you can see the whole basin from Fairlight Hall. All this is draining in here. And we have to look at why drainage is happening. You've got agricultural drainage, um, which drains, and you've got actual the land itself. What is the, the rate at which water is um, transferred? And we can see that vegetation has a huge role as well as drainage that is put in by people. Then you've got the issue of drainage of hardened surfaces that people may have put on. So all that water rushing down floods these houses because this whole area here, water comes down in a freak event. So I thought we'd go and have a look at the various features. Now these colors indicate potential areas that would be in a possible new nature reserve that landowners are discussing at the moment. We also have to see if you can divert that area here. But let's have a look up the valley. And you can see that these farms here are where the water comes. So there's various water courses. The main one goes down the valley and these areas are potential flood areas. I believe they do flood and the owners of these areas are very keen to have drainage um, to get that water past those areas. But let's have a, a look at Mally Dam's Wood. Now, Mally Dam's Wood is interesting in that we get water and occasionally we actually have flooding from this area of land here, which is owned by Mr. Normal. And he's changed this to be far more natural. His formal gardens have now got areas that are um, overgrown and managed um, for bees and whatnot. And that's stopped our flooding problems at the Mally Dams Education Center. Just a simple change in land use, i.e. not mowing the grass. Um, of these areas here that you also had some ponds that used to be f the previous one had built some ponds but they had full water now one of the ponds is completely empty it, it's puddling has failed but that means that has capacity to absorb water so the ability to retain water has much improved because of mr normal's um um grazing regime grazing regime cutting regime and i've been to see him lovely chap and um he is continuing to do that i've given him some tips and um, we'll see how that goes so there we've got this simple thing that water coming off the top goes through his land it was moving more swiftly now it's reduced and that stopped the flooding of the education center at Mally Dams Wood. But what we're interested in talking about is creating natural um, slow the flow structures, uh, leaky dams, or as I like to try to say that we're just pretending to be beavers and we're going to make them. The main area we should concentrate is the watercourse that runs through Mally Dams here. And Obviously, we have to have agreement from neighboring landowners, but in some areas, are con they won't flood uh, neighboring properties. Um, the section of the watercourse actually goes down here, con 
that's contained within um, RSPCA's land holding, and that would be the perfect spot for creating leaky dams. Um, we also have some area that come down here, and again, so basically this section here, this section here, and there's a couple of watercourses coming through Mallee Dams Wood would be excellent for leaky dams. We can also see areas here in Hoodwood that would be a great potential and um, our organic gardening friends over here, there is a potential for this. But to maximize the potential of stopping pet levels flooding, you're really looking at land around the basin, around here. And how can we slow the flow? Well, that's not having it under arable. Re arable reversion to grazing is going to create a lot of slowing the flow, but also looking at the quality of woodlands because woodlands can be both good places to capture water, but some woodlands actually not that good. And the more natural the ground flora, the more dense the vegetation is certainly up here. What you want to do is ensure the heathland character to the woodland is um, in that complex vegetation and the soil structure underneath it absorbs water, slows the flow, vegetation slows the flow, complex organic soils help um, suck in the water into the ground and hold it. And it's all about preventing that peak flow of water. So when rain falls here, slowing the flow, and you can see how it comes down the valley and all the way to pet level. So one of the options we're thinking about is how can we put in these beaver-like structures that will help uh, slow the flow. And this is a perfect representation of where. Now, Google Earth is pretty good at doing this, but obviously a proper LiDAR scan will identify key areas where individual beaver-like structures and buns and pools can be placed at the, at the granular micro level. But this pretty much tells us which water courses um, need to be done. And this is the one we can do down here. And hopefully our, our neighbors are uh, in agreement. And we obviously need to approach Fairlight Hall, but we can see that area there is potentially. And that could solve the problem. As I said, in a microcosm, just Mr. Normal's property here and his formal gardens, but this steeper bit here, he's just left unmowed to create some bee and bird habitat. And that stopped the flooding. And maybe with a bit of effort, the landowner and community around here can come together and put in a few projects that will slow the flow. And then our friends at pet level will not be flooded anymore.